The geometry has been modeled. Now we'll see how to do the same with the saddles. Then, once calculation is run, we'll read the reports and understand the difference between the automated and check design, a key tool to boost your efficiency. Welcome to the third chapter of the first model series. The body of our vessel was modeled in the previous chapter. Please be sure to watch it first. Now, we'll take a look at the saddles. We'll come the first one, right click, then move. Also, you can go to the list of components, then edit, move. We're going to click it and drag it to its final position. We can know which is it by taking a look at the bottom left corner, what is indicated. Please notice that my second saddle has also moved. We are going to double click on the saddle to open the saddles dialog. Here you can see that the position of the first saddle is using the reference line, where the second one corresponds to the spacing between the previous saddle and itself. Now let's add a third saddle. We are going to click on the first one, then add. And it's going to be added just after the last one. The last column shows the tags. This consists of the different dimensions of that saddle. If you want to see what it corresponds to, you click here and then saddle definition to see all the different dimensions of that particular tag. In this case, they are all great because we are taking them from an standard. Which one? You can see here that by default, we are taking autopilot vessel, but there are a lot more standards. Some of them correspond to some of our clients. You can, of course, add yours here as a customizable file. If you don't want to follow any standard, you just click on user defined and then go to saddle definition again. And now you can edit every single dimension of that standard and adapt it to your needs. Then I cancel. My first and third saddle are sharing a definition since I copy the last one from the first one. It is important to know that fixed and sliding saddles shall not share the same definition or tag if you are printing drawing details. You can see here that the saddle in the middle is the fixed one. I can change it by selecting any other one and then checking the fixed saddle option below. For my model, I want it to be at the middle, so I click it again. This is also going to be useful since I want the first and third saddle to be the same and the second one to be different. Not only because it's the fixed saddle, but also because it's located on a smaller diameter. Then I say OK, and you can see it here. I'm, now I'm going to correct the positions of them all. I double click on any one of them. I click on the first one, then I input 500. The second one is OK. Then in the last one, I will click 2000, then OK. Now I have my three saddles, first one and third one being the same, and the second one being different. We can find all the elements that we have modeled in our list of components. Pay attention to the geometry column. If you click on it, it will be ordered from 1 to 10. You can see that some elements have a geometry order assigned, others do not. Elements that do are part of the beam on which the load distribution is going to be made. The other ones, you can consider them as accessories and they will affect that beam, but they are not directly involved. For more information, you can go to the help contents, getting started, and then here you can see autopilot vessel concepts, geometry versus non-geometry. Also, you can see the load type video. Now, to run calculation, you can click once on the calculator from the toolbar or in the menu, execute, calculate strength. You can see that an error window pops up directly. You just say, OK. Now, my tree of results has been filled with all the different chapters of that report. My 3D has also changed from the input view to the design model. You can know that not only for the change in the code of colors, but also it is specified in the bottom of the window. You can see that there are a lot of changes. We have some stiffening rings, but there is more. To see all that and compare, you can use the toggle option from above. Also, go to the view, toggle between input mode and design. That will bring back the original view. By 
clicking and unclicking, you can see all the changes. For example, our body flange has gotten much thicker and now we have a pad in both nozzles. You can obtain a summary of changes by going to the reports summary. And the last one is summary of changes. You can see the table here, but I will just click on show selected report for more convenience. Here you can see a summary of changes of all the elements. You have the initial thicknesses, the initial values, and then the final ones that have changed. What is something curious is that he's telling me that I'm using six millimeters as initial value all over the place. If I go back to my model, you will see that I have specified no thickness. Well, that is for all the elements except for the first one. Actually, Autopy Vessel assigns an initial thickness to the first element by default. You can, of course, change that value in the customizable files. He will start the thickness iteration starting from that value. There is something called the propagation of thickness that will make that any element whose thickness is missing will take the value from the previous one. Let's see how Autopy Vessel report looks like. So we're going to go here to the tree of results, display it, and internal pressure. We're going to see first the elliptic ahead then. This is a typical Autopy Vessel report when several load cases are condensed in just one page. At the beginning, we have an image, the explanation of the nomenclature. In the first part, we have the input values depending on the cases. For example, whether it's corrosion or the different temperature for the interpolated values of the allowables. Then we have the equations that are going to be checked and the intermediate values and final values. This same applies to this second half. Let's review the conical shell report. Click here again. This red message is calling our attention and telling us that there is a problem. It is surely related to some of the error messages from the summary of errors from before. We were going to see that later. These are the check-ins at the large junction. And here are the same for the small one. And again, a message in red. Let's see the summary of errors from before. You click on errors and it just appears. First, you have the name of the element, the tag of the elements, and then the condition under which the problem is appearing. And then you see the message, we need a knuckle because our half apex angle is greater than 30. We saw that in the internal pressure report. Then you have that there's a problem with the reinforcement at the small junction. We also saw that. Let's solve this. We double click on the first cone. Then here you have the knuckle definition and we are going to input 100 for the large space and 50 for the small one. Then we click OK. Let's do the same for its mirror, 150. Regarding the reinforcement, we are going to increase the minimal thickness of both shells. So we are going to input animal a minimal of 10, and here, let's do the same. Now we are going to run calculation. There is no error message popping up this time. We do have some warnings that we will take a look later. But before that, I want you to pay attention to the fact that we only have one stiffener ring left, and it's located at the large junction of the first cone. Nevertheless, this vessel should be symmetric. Why is that we don't have a similar stiffening ring in the other cone. Well, this is because of the thickness propagation. When we set the thickness of the shells at the middle as 10, we indicated that the second half of the vessel will at least have 10 millimeters, but not the first half. Let's check it this in the summary of changes. You can see here that the shell before the first cone is having a thickness of nine, while the other one is at least having 10. We can check this by going to execute convert results as input data. This will make that our, all our results will appear as input from now on. So I said it. There's an stiffening ring as my input. I have also my nozzle pad, my thickness. And here I will check my theory regarding thickness. So I will double click here. I have nine. And this one, 
I have 10. Well, just having a stiffening ring because of one millimeter is not very sensible, so let's change it. We are going to erase this stiffening ring. How to do that? If you select it in the 2D, then press erase in your keyboard. If you don't want that, or it's too thin for you, you can look for the stiffening ring in the list, then edit, erase selection. Now we are going to increase all the thicknesses at the same time. To do that, I go to the menu edit, change body properties. I select all the elements. I click on the first one, then with shift in my keyboard, I select them all, apply change to thickness and a value of 12. Then I say apply and then exit. If I click anywhere, I have 12 millimeters. Now I'm going to change to check design. This time I don't want this program to do any changes. I double click in the background to go to the general properties and I check my check design option. And then I say, okay, and I run calculation again. No change has been made this time to our 3D. Also, you can check that our summary of changes is no longer there. This is because in check design mode, the software is not allowed to do any changes. Still, there are some warnings pending. We will see that in the last chapter of this series, as well as how to get all the deliverables, such as the drawings and the bill of materials. Thanks for watching and see you there.